So if you haven't uh, watched this on my channel before, this is a like a future base cover of Sonic 3's Ice Cap Zone, uh, which is, you know, like the most remixed, you know, totally overdone uh, Sonic song ever, but I wanted to do my own my own take on it. So I, uh, I did a little future base remix. And uh, let's start at the very, very beginning here. This is, uh, it starts off with pretty much the original Sega Genesis sounds playing the song. So it sounds like I sampled the original track, but I didn't. And I'll go through exactly what I did in a moment here. Here's what you hear at the beginning of the track. So the classic Sonic track right there. Um, but you'll see these are actually genuine MIDI instruments playing this part right now. Uh, you can hear, you know, these this nice chord pad. You know, this awesome bass line here. And then these drums as well. Uh, so for the chord pad and the bass and later the lead, which we'll get into in a second, uh, that is all Native Instruments FM8 playing this part right here. Uh, and this is a patch that, um, there's a funny thing about the Sega Genesis is that the, uh, the chip inside it, the sound chip that's playing all the sounds you hear in every Sega Genesis game uh, is actually a little mini Yamaha DX7, uh, which if you, if you don't know what the Yamaha DX7 is, I can Google a picture of one for you right now. <laughs> this is a very classic, uh, it's this guy. It's a classic, fantastic keyboard uh, that was, uh, you know, it's from the 80s. It's, it's the sound of the 80s, really. Uh, every you know cheesy piano sound you've ever heard from an 80s song was a Yamaha DX7, and that is what is is found inside the Sega Genesis. Uh, so the the short of it is, Sega Genesis sound patches are compatible with Yamaha DX7s, uh, and FM8, formerly FM7, was a uh, is a emulation of a Yamaha DX7 with you know a million more amazing features in it. Uh, but the short of it is, you can rip Sega Genesis sound patches into Native Instruments FM8, and that's what I've done here. Uh, so this is the actual pad you hear in uh, the Ice Cap Zone from Sonic 3. And I can play anything I want on that part. If I actually arm it, hang on. You know, whatever I want to do. Uh, I can play that in the ice cap sound, so it's awesome. Um, and same goes for the bass part. I have this, you know, fantastic classic Sega Genesis bass. It's so much fun to play with. Uh, so if you go digging around the internet, you'll find these patches floating around somewhere, and you can import them. Uh, you have to find DX7 uh, SysX messages. Um, and that's a whole another world of getting into, you know, MIDI messages and all that stuff. So I, I won't go into it here, but the short of it is I am actually playing these instruments on, uh, a synthesizer rather than just sampling the original track. Um, these drums are sampled from a Sega Genesis and I have an individual drum kit here for, uh, you know, the kick, the snare, this nice clave. Actually, that I think I made myself. That's uh, 70. I think that's a 707 clave. And then I have these two effects that play. Um, they're like these sample hits that happen in the beginning of that tune. So you'll hear that. You know, uh, and all together it's... Nice classic sound. Uh, and the one other thing you do here and there, oh, that's this. 
Uh, this is Native Instruments Rise and Hit library, uh, which you'll see me using a lot on these streams. It's a really nice way to uh, it's, uh, get a quick impact sound or a big reverse cymbal or something to just really ramp up the tension. So you'll, in fact, you can see me doing that like every eight bars here <laughs> just to really make sure each hit punches you in the face. Uh, and this is what that sounds like. So that's, it's not quite subtle, but it, it's in the background a little bit there. So that's what that sound is. You'll hear me do that all the time. Uh, and then at the very end of that section right here. And leading into the next part, depending on what kind of speakers you're listening to this on right now, you may not hear this. Uh, but this is like a sub drop. Uh, that is literally just Ableton's operator. Um, can I zoom in on this? Doing that, just going up and down. You can see I've written in the automation here. Uh, and that just adds to the, uh, you know, the tension and release that you're trying to create when you make a track like this, especially an EDM track. Uh, so after that intro, it drops into this little build, sort of, uh, where I have this arpeggio playing. Again, that's FM8 from the Sega Genesis, uh, along with this lead, which I just love so much. I love, how, I love that little vibrato on it. I don't know what that is, but it, it just sounds so nice. Uh, and on that lead... I have a couple effects you'll see. Um, these get turned on later, uh, but there is just a ping pong delay at like 29% um, mix, and that just gives it a little more space as opposed to this dry. Oh, I have a uh, delay or reverb going too. Um, so, yeah, that's that. That's the lead. And this section. So down here I have a clap going. This is just like an 808 clap or something. What is, what is it? Clap. Does it does it give me its name? Oh, that's the Arena Clap from Native Instruments Battery, uh, which is the only drum kit I use for any EDM ever. <laughs> and right here we got the snare build. That's the snare build happening here. Uh, which is really active. That was tough to play in the video. And again, that's just an 808 snare. Here's another sub drop. So what's happening here is uh, that audio effect rack, I brushed aside earlier this thing here this kicks on right at the start of that build watch sorry i was mistaken it's this auto filter here you'll watch the filter drop as soon as it gets into that let me see if i can bring up the automation lane for that there we go so you'll watch this frequency drop as soon as we hit the bridge or the build So that's just, uh, you know, contributing to the tension a little bit. Like I said, everything uh, in tracks like these is about tension and release. So it's building tension here. Release just a little bit, and then you'll hear me build up a ton of tension at the end of this measure. And right there. That is the most tense you can get. You you build this huge, huge, huge buildup, and uh, and then you just kind of you you don't you don't give the audience the satisfaction just yet. You leave them hanging a little bit. And right there is where we hit them with some ginormous drums and punch them in the face with some sweet super bass chords, future bass. So 
let's break down what happens here. Uh, first, really quick, there is a drum fill. This is being played by Stephen Slate Drums, which sounds like this. And that is a whole mess of effects uh, messing with that sound there. So it's this audio effect rack, which I have the lows and highs cut out. So let's turn that off for a second. And then there's saturator crunching it up, a compressor really squashing it. Uh, I'm cutting the lows out just a little bit because I want to leave the lows for my actual kick drum, which you can see hanging out over here. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, and that leaves just Stephen Slate. So here's what Slate sounds like on its own. And then cut some lows, compress a little bit, and then saturate. Oh, that was on, sorry. And finally, with everything in there, uh, we've got this compressed, you know, transistor radio sound. And then it kicks in full volume in a second. So yeah. Um, now, let's start really quickly with what's going on in the drums. Get this stuff out of the way. Uh, so the drums here, first off we have Stephen Slate playing the whole way through. And you'll notice I leave really big breaks in there like that. That's okay. It sounds weird on its own, uh, but once you put the entire arrangement together, it starts to make sense. So that's the Stephen Slate drums there. Below that, I have a ginormous kick, almost definitely from... Oh, that's not actually from the arena kit. Are you sure? No, that's just a 909. That's awesome. I never do that. It's been like a month since I've touched this track, so I forgot what I did. Uh, yeah, this is just a 909 kick. I don't know if it's the stock Ableton 909 or I have, a f it says 909.17, which I think that means it's batteries 909 because they come with like 30 909 kicks, all of which sound exactly the same. I happen to like number 17. I don't know. Uh, so there's the 909 kick playing that. And I cut some mids out of this. Uh, let me see what it sounds like without that cut. Yeah, so you can see it sounds just a little flabbier with that mid-range, and I cut that out to leave more room for the snare, which is where we're going to jump to next. Uh, I think I had a, a few... No, I just had the one. Huh. Well, I have the Stephen Slate snare in there, so keep in mind this is getting mixed with that. This is... Who is this? This is the Afroshop snare, also from Native Instruments Battery. If you can't tell, I really, really like Native Instruments Battery. And it's this nice, really trappy snare. And what's going on here is uh, this snare, if you can look right here, we have the, uh, the send going to Valhalla Vintage Verb on my A return. And Valhalla Vintage Verb has a funny thing going on here. You'll notice I have a couple compressors. One is just a simple compressor doing a little light two to one compression. Nothing crazy, just enough to lift that reverb a little further into the foreground. The second thing going on here is I am actually side-chaining uh, the kick drum to my reverb. So you'll hear the reverb itself ducking, which makes the track sound a little bit huger. So that reverb is ducking in response to the kick, which sounds like this. There's, there's the basis of the percussion, really. Uh, then, as always, I have a tambourine loop here playing. That's on two and four with the snare. That's what that sounds like. And I have this, <laughs> I have this cowbell sound uh, that kind of signals the start of the, uh, of the, the drop. Here, you'll hear what that sounds like in context. This is something I love to do. Uh, I, I like always use this sample too. I try to sneak it in there subtly. So that is, uh, it's, yeah, it's just like an acoustic cowbell. 
again from battery because it's the only thing I use, uh, run through, I think, one instance of Valhalla Vintage Verb. Then I did a, you know, freeze and flatten, uh, which turns any effects on the channel into, it prints them to the audio. So it's finalized. You can chop it and edit it. And that's what I did. I finalized that file. And, oh, here's what it sounds like actually on its own. Yeah. So I made that, and then I reversed it so you get this effect. And in context, it gives you this really nice, this, this cool thing. So that's the percussion. Oh, and the last thing I have on here. I felt like it sounded a little empty, the drums, uh, when, I was, when I was arranging it. And again, in battery, there's this fan noise sample, and this is the stupidest thing ever. Here's what it sounds like on its own. It's a fan. It's just a fan. Uh, but with a high-pass filter, a sidechain compressor, and a little bit of micro-shift, which is taking those pitches and shifting them just slightly in either direction and then panning that throughout the, uh, throughout the stereo spectrum, which gives you a nice little bit of space. You get this stupid noise sound. And believe it or not, I, I felt like it needed that. <laughs> uh, and then you'll see this deactivated clip down there, which we will uh, get into right here. Halfway through the drop, these really, really trappy hi-hats come in. Uh, this is a patch I've set up in Drum Rack in Ableton uh, that lets me play these repeated rolling hi-hat loops uh, without having to go dig -dig 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 -dig, you know, really fast on the... Uh, on the F-sharp key for hi-hat. Uh, so you'll see how this works. I'll blow this up. So just watch these notes and see how the higher notes play faster hi-hats. Check this out. You can see them down here too. So it's a really, really nice, easy little bit of workflow uh, that makes everything easier for me. I love doing that. That's the extent of the drums. Here's what the drums sound like all together there. And the drums have just a little bit of light compression on there. It's like a two and a half to one ratio. Uh, and Native Instruments Transient Master adding both a little bit of attack and a little bit of sustain. Not much. So that's the drums. Uh, and that's about all that happens in the drums in this song. The verse, you know, has, has some more simple stuff, but it's still that kick and snare. Nothing much changes. Uh, so to get on to the fun part, here are the synths at that section. Here's what that sounds like. It sounds not that huge on its own, right? Um, this is one of those things where a track is much, much more than the sum of its parts. Because these drums on their own, they sound good, but they don't sound massive, you know? And these synths certainly don't. And the bass... That certainly doesn't sound huge, but you put it all together and with a little bit of limiting on the on the master, which we won't do right now, but uh, you put it all together. So that's what arrangement can do for you. It builds a bigger track than the pieces you put into it. Uh, so let's break down that synth part. The very first thing that happens is uh, this lead plays, and this is, uh, I was talking about freezing and flattening tracks earlier, right? You hit freeze, and then it'll give you the option to flatten the track as well, which turns it into raw audio from a MIDI file or from whatever you were working with. Um, 
So I froze and flattened this lead we were playing earlier. You know, the, uh, oh goodness, where is it? This guy. I froze that so I could mess with it. Where is it? All right, there we go. And I distorted it and time stretched it and made it just sound as gross as I possibly could. And you'll notice I did a stutter edit in here, which is where I take one little slice and I'll copy and then duplicate it. And you get this really glitchy, this nice sound. Uh, so I did a little bit, a couple of those throughout the piece. So there's that lead playing, and then in addition to that, that's just a little saturated. Uh, I reduced the width of the stereo. I guess it was kind of stereo-y, and I wanted it to be less so. Um, and then I put an auto pan on it, which just subtly moves it side to side in the stereo spectrum, and then I did a high pass. Uh, and then I duplicated that track, and if I remember correctly, this sounds really messed up. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted that to sound just as gross as possible. Uh, and I think, if I remember correctly, I achieved that by... Okay, it's not going to show it because I froze and flattened already. Uh, oh, no, never mind. I'm using um, the ridiculously named Little Alter Boy by Sound Toys. <laughs> I love these guys. Um, this is a pitch shifting plugin, which does hilarious things to uh, any sound you put into it. Like, uh, you know, I could pitch shift my voice up like this or really far down like this. I can pitch shift the farming to like a chipmunk voice or to, you know, a really deep, big, scary voice. Uh, and then you can do other things to it. You can drive it a little. You can mix the sound so it sounds like two different people are talking or like a robot voice kind of thing. There is actually a robot voice sound and it sounds like this. That's enough of that. Uh, that's what I was using to distort this sound. It's pitched down an octave. Uh, I form and shifting it down a little bit, which really screws up synthesizer sounds. Uh, and the mix is all the way up. So this is the sound you get when you mix those two. Oh no, I just want just these two. So it's a nice kind of screwed up octave sound, little glitchy, you know? Uh, so that is that. And then I think, yes, okay, I did an octave up from there as well. Uh, that I did not do with Little Alter Boy. I actually physically pitch shifted that in Ableton. Uh, and I purposely used the Beats algorithm, which I think sounds like garbage on anything else, but I wanted it to sound like garbage for this. See, I love how just glitchy and gross that sounds. And all together, those three sound like this. I think it sounds really cool. Uh, so getting onto the actual future bassy part of this, um, here are a bunch of seventh chords, which is literally all you need to make future bass. <laughs> as Frank Javsey would put it. Uh, that's a... It's like a big major nine chord. And what is going on here is a lot of things. Uh, so to take it into Serum, I'm just going to temporarily mute our reverb so that doesn't distract us. This is a really straightforward... Um, super saw kind of synth. Hang on real quick. Let me bypass. Oh, can I bypass the modulator? That sounds so fancy. Um, 
Okay, so here's that sound. Oh. That's that sound. <laughs> and there's a couple things happening here. Uh, one, it's a super saw with... Did I put some effects? No, no effects. There we go. I think there's... Okay, there is saturation on the master of this synthesizer bus. Uh, so I'll turn that off for a second. Oh, I actually don't want to forget that's on. So, uh, But there is saturation going on there. It's just a really straightforward super saw, which is uh, a saw that's been detuned like crazy to give you this sound. So here's regular saw. And then you add some detuning, which takes some of those notes and spreads them further apart. And I think I had 11 and 14. This second oscillator over here is playing the same thing an octave up. And then the last thing going on here is the thing I bypassed earlier. This is an LFO, uh, which is like, a, if you don't know what an LFO is, it's a something you can use to automate another sound. In this case, I'm using an LFO that's literally like a, a little person moving a knob going whoop, 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 over and over again, up and then down slowly, uh, except really fast, um, twice per beat, playing eighth notes. Uh, and I'm using that to turn up and down a volume knob on each of these synthesizers. So you get this sound. And I can make that any pitch I want, or any, uh, any rhythm I want. Here's quarter notes. But in this case, I want, uh, I can do 16th notes. That actually sounds really cool. I wish I'd done that. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, so eighth notes. I did eighth notes for this whole piece. And that's the future bass sound, really. Uh, that's the general idea of it. The last thing that's going on here is there is a pitch bend on this. You can see I've written it in, in the automation here. Uh, and all I'm really doing is playing... Uh, the chords that, you know, this intro pad was playing. It's just a descending C minor progression. And I just added, I literally just added notes until it sounded good, <laughs> until it sounded future bassy. Um, they're just big jazzy chords. Uh, if you want to dive into some jazz theory, that would really help you with this kind of stuff. Uh, so those are playing that. And then immediately below them is another track with the same MIDI file, just duplicated. And this one sounds very similar. And that is actually, I think if I remember correctly, that's like a brass ensemble. Yes, okay, so this is... So that's a, uh, this, this brass ensemble usually sounds really realistic, and I had to work very hard to get it to sound so fake. Uh, and that was by turning down both the attack and the release. So as soon as I let go of the key, the sound stops, as opposed to, you know, a normal brass instrument where the sound fades out very quickly, but it sounds more natural, you know, more like this. Oh, God, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Not like that. Yeah. So between that and some pitch bend work, uh, I got this really weird sounding uh, pad, but it still sounds very organic because it's real brass instruments. So those are playing that. And then to get the same, uh, the same thing I used on Serum here, this LFO, uh, the guy who makes Serum actually makes another tool called LFO Tool, which does the same general thing. If I actually remember to turn it on. Here. So mixed together, those two sound like this. And the brass really does add some body to that sound. Without it, and with. 
So it's a nice, nice uh, combination there. And that is really the extent of what's going on with the main synthesizers there, which is pretty cool. Uh, oh, and there's one more, this, this little drop here. That's fun. So, <laughs> what's going on there? Uh, that's just a little sound effect I like to put in sometimes. Um, this is Serum, again. Uh, this is a kind of bloated saw wave. I used Ben Plus to kind of push it out a little bit. And it is doing just this nice <laughs> bend. <laughs> just doing that. Nothing crazy, nothing special. Uh, but I used a formant filter, uh, which a formant filter emulates vowel sounds. Hello. Uh, so a formant filter there does this. Uh. <laughs> and you can make it say any kind of combination of vowel sounds. Let me see what else we can get out of it. E. That's about it, I guess, actually. <laughs> oh, no, I've broken it. Oh, it's because I have to. There you go. So I'm going to leave it at that one. Yeah. Uh, but you can see it's this really complicated filter shape uh, that happens to make vowel sounds. Uh, it's a, it's a, that's a formant filter. That's what they do. Uh, so that just comes in on one of those little drops that I usually put the cowbell on, but it's something different, so it surprises you. Uh, yeah, so that's the extent of the synth work on this. Uh, Complementing the synths is this bass, uh, which is a really, really simple, straightforward bass. Uh, there's not a lot going on with it. In fact, it's it's actually just Ableton's operator playing a sine wave. And, and I have LFO tool playing there. As well as a sidechain compressor. So the bass sound is just this. Nothing crazy. Uh, I then add saturator on top of that and we get this sound. And that's just a little bit of light saturation from Ableton Saturator. Uh, on top of that, I have the sidechain compressor. So it literally gets completely out of the way of that kick drum. You can hear them interacting here. a really really cool interaction between the two of them uh, and then complementing the bass is this growl that comes in uh, and that is of course serum I think it's the monster set yeah it's always the monster setting it's the only one I like So that's a really nice sound. Uh, that is the Monster Wavetable, which was made by Seamless. Uh, and all I'm doing there is modulating the Wavetable setting in Serum. Uh, if you ever feel like you're lost with Serum, or you, you have any questions, oh, I'm not modulating. I'm modulating it with an LFO. That's it, sorry. Um, a great rundown of how Serum works and what it is and what it's good for. Uh, was done by Virtual Riot. If you search Virtual Riot uh, Serum, you'll get his walkthrough of Serum. It's like two hours long, and he covers everything. He's amazing. Uh, it's how I learned everything I'm doing with Serum. Uh, so all I'm doing here is routing an LFO, just doing this to the wavetable position, which in Serum, uh, which on the monster one in particular, uh, does this. Okay. So it's just great, great, great for, uh, you know, 
big wobble bases and stuff. It's really cool. Oh, got to turn that back on. Really fun. Uh, so in context, that sounds like this. And then, of course, the last thing going into this uh, are these really fun samples I've got here. Where are those? I don't even know where I put them. There it is. It says, come on. <laughs> uh, so this is the actual, um, I think it's Michael Jackson. I honestly think it's Michael Jackson uh, doing all these samples. gotta be michael <laughs> so that's the uh what is that that's from the mini boss the sonic 3 mini boss not sonic and knuckles um and you know that that sample plays in the middle of it and that it kind of sneaks its way into other stuff too uh so i try to sneak that into a uh remix anytime i do it <laughs> Oh, and at the very end here, we have that trappy snare return here a little bit. Uh, it plays that at the end of each phrase. And that is, again, just an 808 snare tuned up really high. Sounds really fun. There's not too much going on on the second verse here. The old Genesis sounds return. Uh, with the 909 kick we were using before. And I think, uh, yeah, just a light clap here. The only fun thing that enters is this snare here, right here. And that's, again, that's just that 808 snare. I did a little fun pan from left to right to left. Right there. And right after that, we go into this kind of alternative build. Where it gets kind of dancey, and that's just the kick, and... Uh, the reverb snare I was using before. And that gets really trappy. That's an 808 sub playing there. Uh, this is, I think this is a sample. Oh no, that's massive. Uh, yeah, this is massive playing this part. That's right. I uh, I don't use Massive that much anymore. Uh, it used to be, you know, my go-to synth. It was everybody's go-to synth uh, like five years ago. And uh, Serum has really replaced Massive in a lot of ways for a lot of people, myself included. Uh, but Serum takes up a lot of processor space, and it can sometimes take a little bit of time to get the sound you want. Uh, and I've found for 808s in particular, I can get a great 808 sound like that uh, in Massive because I've been using it for, you know, 10 years now. Um, not 10 years. Has it been around 10 years? Long time. Um, here we go. So envelope 2 here is playing with the pitch of this note. Otherwise, it's just a simple sine wave with a little bit of decay. but we turn on this pitch drop right here, which takes it up 20 half steps. So it's almost two octaves we're dropping this sound really quickly. If we slow it down, it sounds like this. And 
that's an 808 sound right there. Uh, after that, I distort it with the classic tube. Because without it, it sounds like this. And you can't really hear the tone of it. And I want to use it as our bass. So I distort it so we get some of those upper harmonics out of it. And you can hear the tone of the bass. So in context, that sounds like this. And again, there's my rolling hi-hats. And then I have this cheesy little piano to catch you by surprise here. This is literally just the Ableton Grand Piano. And then halfway through that measure, the beat kicks back in, kicks you in the face. Right there, just like that. Uh, the second chorus plays out exactly like the first. So there's nothing really new to go over. And it's like, oh, I did substitute the come on. Uh, or no, I substituted the, uh, this thing. For the woo from uh, the same Sonic mini boss, the Sonic 3 mini boss. That one. <laughs> uh, and those samples I ripped from the Genesis. that I did flying battery two weeks ago uh, and I have another tune coming up this coming Saturday uh, which I still have a little bit of editing to do I should do that tonight um, it's another sonic tune it's, it's the sonic tune that one uh, so that'll be up on Saturday I don't have much else to go over uh, thank you for watching tonight I will be doing more live streams every Tuesday night I'm hoping to get back on my weekly schedule uh, I will soon be working my way up to a weekly cover video on Saturdays, uh, along with some other like lessons and stuff, answering some questions I've gotten uh, through my YouTube channel and, and through my own students uh, that I have, uh, questions I hear pretty often. Uh, so I'll be tackling some of those in the next few weeks. If you have any questions about any kind of music-related stuff, please leave them below in the comments, and I will get to them in a future video. Uh, or any cover songs you want to hear, any you know Sonic, Mega Man, any of that. Uh, I will tackle that anytime. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.